Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Hello and welcome back to the Alpha Male Podcast. I am your host, Michael Melito. First and foremost, I am a Christian. I make no apologies for that. It's first and foremost in everything in my life. This podcast, you don't have to be a Christian to listen to it, but you must know that I am a Christian and that forms uh, everything that I do and this podcast is no different. So, today is going to be entitled Biblical Warfare or Just Warfare. Today I'm going to be going over several principles in the Bible concerning warfare. I just read you Psalms 144. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Exodus 15.3 The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Jeremiah 20:11 But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior so my persecutors will stumble and not prevail they will fail and be thoroughly disgraced their dishonor will never be forgotten amen guys uh, be careful what i say here no human interpretation is perfect and i'm no different um, anytime you get somebody interpreting a perfect God, they are imperfect and they will inevitably introduce something imperfect. And churches are no different. No church is perfect. Not the Catholic Church, not any of the hundred denominations of Protestant churches. Um, by very nature, we are imperfect beings. You need to do your own research into what the Word of God says. And I certainly encourage that. I think, in my own opinion, this is not biblical, but in my own opinion, mainstream Christianity today, whatever that is, has kind of a watered-down, softer version of the Bible and of Jesus. They focus on the soft, um, the soft parts and, uh, you know, the Sermon on the Mount parts. And those are important parts, too. Every word of the Bible is inspired by God and important. But there are also parts like I just read. This is the Alpha Male Podcast. The Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. The Lord is a warrior. The, our God is an awesome God. He is fierce. He is to be feared. Look up how many times in the Bible it says to fear the Lord. He is mighty. He is awesome. And he calls men to be warriors just off the top of my head. Joshua. Moses, Gideon, David, one of the great men of the Bible, a mighty warrior. How did that start off? He was called to be king by God as a young shepherd boy, but he had already killed bears and lions, it says, once he'd gone to face Goliath. And he slaughtered Goliath, and he cut his head off. How's that for a, you know, you know, soft, fluffy story for kids, like, he killed him, then he stood over him and cut his head off with his own sword. David, Gideon, Joshua. Don't worry about what society is trying to mold you into. Focus on what God is molding you into. Isaiah 64, 8. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. What is God molding you into? God molded many men into mighty warriors. Gideon, when that starts off, he's hiding. God molds him into a mighty warrior. Not everybody is called to be that. God calls us to different things. But I'm talking to alpha males, to the ones called to be warriors today. Let me read you from... uh, Joshua, we'll start in uh, verse 5. And just a short caveat, you guys know that there were no chapters or verses in the Bible until fairly recently for most of the biblical history. Those were added fairly recently, but they're just good for reference. No man will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses I will not fail you nor abandon you. Be strong and courageous, 
for you are the one who will lead those people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I will give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left, that you may be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be dif- do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Being strong and courageous is commanded by God. And if you don't know the book that he's talking about, this is Joshua. This comes after the first 5 books in the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He's talking about the law written in those. But you are called to be strong and of good courage. Be strong and courageous. Be that alpha male man of God, a mighty warrior. Now there's a few different places this is written. Uh, in the Psalms by David, this is Second Samuel 22. It's also in Psalms 18, very similar. Uh, this is repeated many times. Uh, you'll find this in Second Samuel 22. I'll start in the beginning and then uh, I'll go to the middle of verse 33. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. He is my refuge, my savior, the one who saves me from violence. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise. And he saved me from my enemies. The waves of death overwhelm me. Floods of destruction sweep over me. The grave wraps its ropes around me. Death laid a trap in my path. But in my distress I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I cried to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry reached his ears. Verse 33. Or verse... uh, We'll start 30. Let's start in verse 30. In your strength, I can crush an army. With my God, I can scale any wall. God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. Amen. He is the shield for all those who look to Him for protection. Amen. For who is God except the Lord? But who is our God? Who but our God is a solid rock? God is my strong fortress. Amen. He makes my way perfect. Amen. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer. Amen. He establishes... Enabling me to stand on mountain heights. Amen. He trains my hands for war. He strengthens my arms to draw a bronze bow. Amen. The King James or the New King James says, He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me your shield of victory. Your help has made me great. And King James says, Your gentleness has made me great. You have made a wide path for my feet to keep me from slipping. Amen. I chased my enemies and destroyed them. I did not stop and they will I did not stop until they were conquered. I consumed them. I struck them down so they did not get up. They fell beneath my feet. You have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued my enemies under my feet. You placed my foot on their necks. I have destroyed all who hated me. You'll find this very similar. This is Psalm 18. For who is God except the Lord? Who but our God is a solid rock? God arms me with strength. He makes my way perfect. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer. He enables me to stand on, stand on mountain heights. He trains my hands for battle. He strengthens my arms to draw a bronze bow. Again in King James. 
He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Psalms 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? And the Bible says David is a man after God's own heart, and David was many things. He was a king, he was a poet, he was a musician, and he was a warrior. And he was a man after God's own heart. Let me read you about some of David's mighty men. You'll find this in 2 Samuel 23. There was also Benaniah, son of Jehoadiah, a valiant warrior from Kazil, from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once armed only with a club, he killed an imposing Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benaniah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaniah as famous as the three mighty warriors. How about this one? Jashobin, the Hakmonite, was a leader of the three, the, th- the three mighty warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. How about this one? Eleazar, son of Dudai, or Duday, a descendant of Ahoa, once Eliezer and David stood together against the Philistines when the entire Israelite army had fled. He killed Philistines with his hand. He killed Philistines until his hand was so tired to lift his sword. Let me back up. He killed the Philistines until his hand was so tired until his hand was too tired to lift his sword. And the Lord gave him a great victory that day. The rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. The next in the rank was Shema, son of Agi or Agi of Harar. One time the Philistines gathered at Lehi, and attacked the Israelites in a field full of lentils. The Israelite army fled, but Shema held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines, so the Lord brought about a great victory. Just after this is recorded that uh, three mighty men snuck behind the enemy lines, like something out of a special forces movie, because David wanted water from a well, and they got that water for David. And he was... He wouldn't drink it. He poured it out to the Lord because they had risked their lives for it. Mighty men of valor. David's mighty men. And David was himself a mighty warrior. You're saying, uh, you might be saying to yourself, you know, that's all Old Testament stuff. Well, let's go to the very end of the New Testament, Revelation. This is 19. We'll start in verse 11. Then I saw heaven open, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judged fairly and waged a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was Word of God. His title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. Horses, For his mouth, from his mouth, came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe, at his thigh, was written the title, 
King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Read that for yourself and see if that's not talking about Jesus the Christ. Notice he talks there about raging a a righteous war. And all throughout the first five books of the Bible, you see laws concerning warfare throughout the whole Bible, but uh, especially the first five books of the Bible. Leviticus 26. I will give you peace in the land and you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and will keep your enemies out of your land. In fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. All your enemies will fall by. All your enemies will fall beneath your sword. When you go out to war against your enemies, be sure to stay away from anything that is impure. This is Deuteronomy twenty-four. It goes over men who become ceremonially unclean. Who are exposed to things. It talks about keeping the camp holy. Um, having an area is designated outside the camp. When you go out to war. To cover your refuse. To have an implement in your tools. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20. When you go out to fight your enemies. And you face horses and chariots. An army. And an army greater than your own. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Is with you. When you prepare for battle, the priest must come forward to speak to his troops. He will stand there. Listen to me, all you men of Israel. Do not be afraid as you go out to fight your enemies today. Do not lose heart or panic or tremble before them. For the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies. He will give you victory. Do you hear that calling from God to be a mighty man of war? seems like we live in a culture where we're trying to be pacified and feminized and and whatever the garbage is about toxic masculinity and you should never use your masculinity or your your might that you're given from God to take advantage of the poor, the weak, the destitute, the fatherless, the widow, the orphan. You should never do that. You should use that power and strength to protect them and to protect your fellow man. But there's nothing wrong with being a mighty man of God. Nothing at all. Be the person God is calling you to be. And I don't know who that is for you. But I am constantly learning who that is for me. Deuteronomy 20. I'll read it again. When you go out to fight your enemies. And you face horses and chariots. And armies greater than your own. Do not be afraid. The Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt is with you. Listen to me all you men of Israel. Do not be afraid. As you go out to fight against your enemies today, do not lose heart or panic or tremble before them. For the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies and give you victory. The battle is the Lord's. The victory is the Lord's. The glory is the Lord's. Everything is the Lord's. What did you get that you did not first receive from God? Not a single breath. Everything belongs to God especially the victories. Don't forget that in your victory, thinking that you got it because you had a mighty hand or because you were so great. It's not because of you or how strong you are. It's because of God and how much he loves you and how strong he is. He redeems you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Deuteronomy 12, No one be able to stand against you, for the Lord your God will cause the people to fear and dread you, as he promised, wherever you go, in the whole land. This is Deuteronomy 28. I'd encourage you on your own to read all of Deuteronomy 28. It's full of the blessings of the people of God and the people who obey God. His law, His commands. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. The King James, or the New King James says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. And let me read to you from the words of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. But now, he said, this is Jesus, take your money and a traveler's bag, and if you do not have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. For the time has come 
for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. He was counted among the rebels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. Look, Lord, they replied, we have two swords among us. That is enough, he said. And you can go deep into this teaching, but Jesus commanded his disciples to have swords, to even sell and get a sword if they did not have one. And he also said, not to skew it on my own favor, they said, we have two swords. which means Jesus' disciples were armed. They had swords. And he said, it is enough. So obviously not every one was called or needed to have a sword. But he called some of his followers to have swords. Obviously to have swords. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Are you called to have a sword? Are you called to be a mighty warrior for God? There's a lot of different ways that can manifest. Don't be conformed to the image of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. I cannot tell you what God's calling you to do. It's a lifelong pursuit to find what God's calling me to do. I would just tell you to seek God, seek His face, seek His word, and see what God is calling you to do. Is He calling you to be a mighty man, a warrior? If so, don't be afraid of it. Don't run from it, but embrace it. Thanks, and have a blessed day.